This is either gonna be really good or really shit. Hi guys, Arrington Johnson here with something familiar, but I'm gonna try and make it different. I'm gonna try and actually do a serious tutorial. And if you've been with me for a while and have seen some of my quote unquote tutorial videos, it's usually me drawing something really quick and not knowing what the fuck I'm doing in any way, shape, or form. And I want to make a few more videos like this. I want to actually try and show you guys stuff that I do in most, if not all, of my drawings. Whether it be my line art drawings with lots of clean little simple lines and I guess quote unquote blocky shading. That's what I like to call it. Or something that might be even more elusive, my paintings that I do digitally. And um, I have different techniques for both of them and I have the same techniques for both of them. Right now I'm going to try and teach you one that I usually do for paintings. Now, if you've ever seen me on Twitter or you've seen the progress of any of my paintings, you usually see that they can tend to come out really gray compared to after I'm done filtering them. And for those of you who don't know what my filtering is, Basically, I make the base painting, which is just my work, that's it, just the colors I've slapped on myself. And then after that's all done, after the entire painting's hashed out, I go over it with shading, luminosity, overlay layers, and I'm gonna teach you what those layers do and why I do it. Now, sometimes I post on Twitter examples of what my paintings look like with and without filtering, and the ones without look really fucking gray in comparison. They don't usually look like that until I put all the filtering on then turn the filtering off because, you know, ignorance is bliss. And just whenever I make a painting, the initial painting always turns out a little gray. I don't know if that happens to you, maybe because uh, colors are hard to see and you're nearly fucking legally blind like I am. Or you're just not good at nailing down those colors like you wanted to. Me, it's both. I am fucking terrible at seeing, including color, and I just can't get things to cooperate the way I want them to. That's also a reason most of my drawings end up usually very bright and why I like using colors, because I can't see very well. And that's pretty much the best way I can see color if I, is if I can make it bright as almighty fuck. So yeah, besides that, I'm gonna teach you how to fix that. So I'm gonna open up one of my completed paintings. It's the Yuri Plisetsky one. Um, I don't know if the speed paint of this one will be up by the time I finish editing and uploading this. I don't know which is gonna come first, but I'll go ahead and I'll show you what this looks like with and without its filtering. Alright, here's the completed picture, and watch the magic or horror as I take away each individual layering. Alright, this is what he looks like in his raw form. He's kind of gray compared to before, but he's not too bad. But he's still, like, really gray. And I don't know if I should include this as filtering, this is just an overlay pattern I did in cheetah print for his jacket but I'm not gonna include it right now because it's not necessary. So, one of the first things I like to do when I'm done doing raw painting is I like to apply a shade layer. And what this does is it amps up the contrast that is in the picture. And I usually apply the shade in areas like underneath the chin because I only draw people at the hairline to give it more dynamic. And Usually little tidbits that are in the background, like underneath arms and limbs that might be behind the character. I also applied some to the base of the cat's tail and the front part underneath the cat's head. And that basically just amps up the contrast, makes it look more dynamic, more developed. You can see it does look a lot grayer before that. And if I want to further that, sometimes I add a multiply layer, which basically a multiply layer is a layer where you apply any color you want and if you set it on multiply it will always be darker than the color underneath it. So if I were to apply bright pink as a multiply layer 
Sure, it would appear very bright pink on his light skin, but then it would also appear very dark on his jacket. So basically, wherever you apply that, no matter what color it is, it's always going to darken what is underneath it. And I just like that to do more general areas. You can see I pretty much paint bucketed the entire picture and just erased and blurred the areas where the most intense highlights would be. And it just makes the picture, again, look more dynamic, more finished. And I don't know what I had that set at, but you know what, let's just put it there. Also, an important tool to keep in mind when you're doing these layers and all this filtering is clipping groups. Basically, a clipping group is a layer that you put over something and you turn the clipping group on and whatever marks you make will only appear on the layer beneath it. So I could take this bright, bright pink and just do an entire line over Yurio, but since it's a clipping group, it will only appear over him, which is really good for keeping your shading and coloring within the lines. So now that we've made our shading more dynamic, it's time to make our color more bright. And with that, I use overlay layers. Overlay layers just basically increase the saturation of whatever color you make. I like to apply it with airbrush, so as you can see, I wanted his jeans to be more blue, I wanted his jacket to be more yellow toned, so I airbrushed those colors over his jacket and jeans and I set it to overlay. And as you can see, it just makes that color brighter and more prominent. And I also put some gold in his hair. Another picture I use copious amounts of overlay to brighten it up is this fun girl picture. And as you can see, if when I take off all the overlay, she does end up looking very gray, which is understandable since I used mostly like slightly purple tinged whites and grays to shade her. Now luminosity is a thing I really, really love playing with. I use it usually near the very, very end of pictures to add little details like highlights on the face and in the eyes and little strands of hair just to make it look more realistic. I also like to do special effects like light shafts to make the picture seem more lively. And I like to do these little dots, just like little dust dots, I guess, because I just like how they look. So a recap of everything I've just taught you is that it's okay if your final painting ends up looking a little gray. You can always amp it up with plenty of shading and overlay, and you can use it however you want. The possibilities are endless. Sometimes you can toy with Lumi shade layers that'll give it different tones. Sometimes you can keep the shading on the down low or you can amp it up. Sometimes you can keep it light toned and subtle, and other times you can just amp up the saturation with overlay. I hope this was helpful. I know it might be a little short, but I do want to do more of these, including ones on how I do special effects like glitch effects, or maybe the brushes I use in my sketching process and my painting process and all of that. If you have any specific things you want me to teach you how to do, don't hesitate to leave a comment below on it and don't just say teach me how to draw because I don't know how I learned how to draw. I just know these specific techniques that I've learned over the years and adapt have adapted to myself. So I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned a few things. Um, I'm <laughs> kind of nervous about how this turned out. But yeah, so hope to see you soon. Bye!